Good morning. It is Sunday, April 18th, and it is the third Sunday of Easter. And during this Easter time, we continue to rejoice in the resurrection. And we ask ourselves today, how has the resurrection of Jesus Christ changed my life? Have I allowed it to transform me from the inside out? Let's start with the gospel today. So the two disciples, and this is the two disciples from the road to Emmaus, uh, they had shared with the disciples, you know, they had, after they had seen and recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, they ran back to Jerusalem, shared the good news, and then as they're in there, who shows up but Jesus? Didn't knock on the door, he just shows up in the middle. And it's interesting, what he didn't say was, where were you guys, you abandoned me, he says, peace be with you, shalom aleichem, uh, which means may every good thing be with you. Divine mercy. They were startled, they were terrified, they thought they were seeing a ghost, and he says, why are you troubled? You know, and is Jesus saying that to us today? You know, why are you troubled? Do you trust that I'm with you? And he says, why do questions arise in your hearts? So, Sometimes we have this powerful experience of Jesus and then we forget right away and we go back to relying on ourselves. He says, look at my hands and my feet. It's, it's me. Touch me. A ghost doesn't have flesh like I do. And then, you know, they're incredulous for joy. You can imagine what that was like. Like, oh my gosh, he is alive. And then he asks, do you have anything to eat? Now, why does he do this? He wants to show them that He's not a ghost, so there are some heresies that have that came up after his resurrection, people saying he didn't really rise bodily, it was just he was just a ghost. But he he eats, they touch his side, uh, they see that he has risen uh, body and soul. And then he goes on to explain the scriptures uh, that the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, everything was, must be fulfilled in him. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. That's what we do at Mass. That's why we should be in Bible studies. That's why we should pray with the scriptures. God wants to reveal himself to us through the scriptures. That the Christ would suffer, he says, and rise from the dead on the third day, which he did. Why? So that repentance uh, for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations. These two things are important. Repentance, turning away from what is not God, and uh, the forgiveness of sins. He, he paid the price for our sins on the cross. We're going to hear this theme of repentance in, in all the readings. Go back to the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which would have been after the Gospel. You know, Peter... His, the resurrection has changed him completely. You know, he's boldly preaching to the religious leaders, you denied the Holy One and Righteous One. We're witnesses of his resurrection, and basically, you killed him. Now, maybe you acted out of ignorance, but what does he say? Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. That message of, have I allowed the good news of Jesus Christ to... Have me turn away from everything that's not of, not of God, away from my sins, and turn toward him. Have I allowed him into those every place in my life? Is he the Lord of my whole life, or maybe just pieces of it? And then we hear in the first letter of St. John, the second reading, the way that we may be sure that we know him is what? To keep his commandments. When we're living lives of virtue, when, when we've allowed the good news to transform us, people will notice because... You've, you've let go of what's not of God and you're following the commandments. You're living the life that God has called you to. But if you say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, you're a liar. And so let us pray today that the, the Lord can transform us. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus, for him paying the price for our sins on the cross. May we allow this good news to shape us, mold us, transform us, make us new creations in him. Help us not to just keep living our old lives and just profess his name with our lips only, but that our lives may be completely transformed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.